Episode two of the 52 weeks was unveiling the tank and custom built stand. So for this section, we're talking to our core beliefs about the tank and stand. All right, core belief about tank selecting a tank, a, sand, a stand, deciding where you're gonna put it, how big it is, what shape it is. This is the core belief that I would wrap every decision around. Decades worth of knowledge right up front. Here's where we are today. Selecting the right tank size and location will define your success. Mm. Okay, these are the reasons why. Wow, right? that's just your tank and stand selection. Just the tank, the stand, and where and you, where put, you it put it will define your success. And we have some uh, what we believe matters most, but I'm just gonna elaborate a little bit on it first. Yeah. Meaning, like, if you put the tank in a place that you never see it, it will probably not do very well. Mm. If you get it in a, t a size that's too small, that doesn't match your lifestyle uh, uh, to maintain a really uh, volatile tank, well, that probably won't work out for you. If you get too big that I don't actually want to maintain it, that probably won't work out for mm -hmm. you. If uh, you build it in a style that like, you know, like, you felt pressured into or something yeah. and you, you just really wanted to rethink, but the uh, fish tank made more sense. All of these things will define the success. So the the biggest pressure I see people have is bigger, go bigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the definition of success. Yeah, you'll have more success. Be the bigger part you of the have. 500 club yeah, or yeah, whatever yeah. it is. So I, I couldn't do that because I, I couldn't keep up with it personally. Well, and some of the things happens is like a 500 gallon tank. The only place it can go in is a basement. If you don't spend any time in your basement right now, you won't in the future either. It's like, you know what, what it's like? It's like a gym membership. Oh, uh, yeah. It, you know, like, <laughs> if you're not working out right now, uh, my buddy actually said this a while back. He's yeah. like, go do sit-ups and pull-ups for a month. And if you do that successfully for a month, then go, go get, get the, the membership. membership. <laughs> if you don't, just save yourself the damn money, right? <laughs> uh, in this case, too, like, Go spend a month in your basement. Uh, <laughs> if, if you don't already spend time down there, and if you get to the other side, then put the tank <laughs> put down. Put the tank down. Yeah. There. But like the reality is, is put it somewhere that you're gonna enjoy. So mm. think about the size, the shape. Mm -hmm. Think about like even the style of it. I mean, if, if you're just kind of testing this out and you get, you know, uh, uh, like a, a tank and stand that doesn't really match the decor of your home, you're going to be unhappy with that yeah. too, which means you're going to reset it up. It's yeah. going to cost more. It's going to be a big giant pain in the butt. So, all right. Core belief: selecting the right tank size location will define Defines. your success. These are some things that matter most. So, uh, some bullets that matter the most. One of the first ones, and we talked about this a little bit earlier, but here it really uh, rings true. Somewhere, put it somewhere where you will enjoy it. Putting it, put your take somewhere where you enjoy it will have the highest return on investment or ROI. And this is what we're talking about. Return on investment here is joy. All right, I'm gonna give you a, a, a personal uh, experience I just had. You just had. Yeah, so uh, in my house, I was putting in a big tank. I like didn't, I felt like I was just kind of beyond a hundred, another 120 gallon tank. Like I've done enough of these mm -hmm. things, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'm building a new house, or a house is already built rather, but I'm building a new tank in it. And the main floor just doesn't have a place for a 200 a gallon yeah. plus tank in it. So it has to go downstairs. Well, the downstairs is actually nice, so I thought that we would use it more. Mm. Uh, but the reality is, is we just don't use it that often. Yeah. I, my experience with the tank is actually now, I don't really get to sit there and enjoy it. Mm. It's just more labor is really all it is. Yeah, right. And you have to make a physical effort to go downstairs to actually watch the tank and enjoy it and maintain it and stuff like that. It's not, uh, it's out of sight and, uh, and out of mind. So if it wasn't for a YouTube channel and trying to please everybody in the universe, <laughs> I would have been way happier with a 120 gallon tank upstairs by the kitchen table. Yeah. I'd, I'd be able to see it or buy the TV or whatever. I'd be able to just sit there and enjoy it and you know see the fish with my family. And it'd be way more successful simply because I'm getting the return on investment, which is joy in this case of looking at it. Mm. And I can tell you that, and one of the things that really, I don't know why how I missed this, but I now have the 360 in my office and it doesn't even be coral in it, it just has a fish 
but I already, already enjoy it more, more. Yeah, more joyful. Because I can just look up from my desk at any moment in time and see all my fish. Mm. Every time I come in and out of the door, they come to greet me. Yeah. You know, yeah. they're interested in me. Maybe they're just hungry. I don't know. But in my mind, they like me. But you're guaranteed to be here. You're guaranteed to walk by that thing. You're guaranteed to sit next to it for multiple yeah. hours a day. Like that. Yeah. Eight, it, nine hours a day. I get to enjoy se- it. It makes sense. There's nowhere in my life that I get to enjoy the tank more than in my office mm-hmm. at work. Yeah. And I'm yeah. Like, so this is such an obvious place for this Sh- thing to be. Should have done it from the get-go. Yeah, <laughs> I, don't, I, like, I don't think I'll ever have a work environment that doesn't have a reef tank now because yeah. it is the place that I enjoy it the most. Yeah, I, and that speaks directly to the, to the core belief we just said. Uh, having the location defining the success. Would you call it a success that you set it up in your house and a year later took it down? Uh, that's not success. Yeah, I didn't like it there. Yeah. I, I didn't use it. I didn't get to enjoy it. Mm. And it's the complete opposite now. The, chan- the chances of success now where it is skyrocketed, mm-hmm. higher mm-hmm. percentage. Wait, well, dude, it's going to be awesome. <laughs> All right. So uh, uh, another one is, uh, this is interesting, I think. Mm. Uh, I, we're trying to make some like pretty distinct uh, counsel. Like if... You know, my grandmother asked me, uh, rest in peace, hey, yeah. if she said, Ryan, I trust you, what would you tell me to do? Where, yeah, where I sh- would, which take should I get? I'd say bigger is better for people who ha- are on frequent with vacations in a way for weekends. Like, so here I'm away for weekends, so bigger is better. Mm-hmm. And that's all related to that chemistry piece of like things go wrong slower in a large system volume. Right, right, right. right. So if I got a big old tank, I, I can leave for a prolonged period of time with an auto feeder and really mm-hmm. nothing kind of ever goes wrong with it. You throw a little webcam on it or something yeah. and a monitor yeah. of some type. If you're not gonna be around all the time or you disappear for four or five days at a time all the time, bigger is better. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, no question. Uh, the opposite of that is smaller is better for people who are time limited. Yeah, so if you're time limited, like going big, has some advantages, but not if you don't have time to clean the glass, yep. you don't have time to do the water, mm-hmm. uh, you don't have time to fill, clean out all the filters. Like a small little 20 gallon Nouveau or an E170 or all that mm-hmm. kind of stuff that's in that range, those things are so simple to take care of. A, a 20% water change is a single bucket of water. Yeah, man. five gallon bucket and I'm done. Yeah, mix it up, it's done, easy, dude. Easy. Yeah. yeah. And you, you could still get the same amount of joy from that, that little tank uh, that fits your life, that fits your style, that you, uh, somebody could who has uh, the big giant tank, but that fits their life and their style. So this is that piece about you know, looking for advice that fits your specific mm-hmm. need here. And so it's not just bigger tanks are always better. Smaller tanks are always harder. No, man, the smaller tank... As long as you've got meticulous attention to detail and you actually do the work, mm. there's less work to do. Yeah. You know, so in the smaller tank, if you let it, uh, you know, go to crap, it'll do it a lot faster. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But like you don't, you don't get as much leeway. But yeah. your, but your time spent maintaining it and keeping it up is a fraction. Well, I would say is it just these things are going to continue to tie together. I would say that on a smaller tank the skill level is higher because mm. I need to do things right. But at the same time, water changes the ultimate uh, replacement for as skill. As we said earlier. <laughs> uh, so yeah, good. all right. Uh, large fish tanks, uh, uh, fish only tanks, the best option for somebody who wants minimal work and are and gone a lot. So if you want both, I'm both, I go on vacations, mm-hmm. I, don't want, I don't want this thing to suck up my life. Uh, and uh, uh, I think that a large fish only, fish only with live rock tank is probably the best option because they're super easy to maintain. Chemistry doesn't get sucked up by all the corals. The lighting generally doesn't have to be as bright, so you're not, you know, throwing dinos. You're not getting cyano. You're not getting algae the same yeah, way. Yeah. Like there's so many reasons why a fish only or fish only with like live rock or even I guess the the like uh, coral inserts. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that tank may bring you more joy because it matches your lifestyle 
and again, the right answer for you based on your ROI. Mm. Uh, what, Matt, what we believe matters most for Tank and Stand here is uh, an all-in-one makes things so simple, so simple. Yeah. I, I've, I had, I've had 40 breeders with hang-on equipment. I've had, you know, a uh, 60-gallon tank with the whole accoutrement sump and everything down below. But when I got here to the office and got my first Nouveau 40, I was like, ah, oh, this thing is mm. easy. No plumbing, yeah. no immense gear hanging off the back. And AIO, you know, naturally, uh, naturally means less gear, is smaller gear, you know. Uh, less I have to buy, uh, less uh, less I have to do for water changes. Like we said, you know, an AIO, you know, uh, even a large AIO, two buckets a uh, uh, two buckets a week, and I'm done. Okay, so this is actually a good example. Is uh, it keeps fitting together? Uh, the E170 <laughs> yeah. that everybody has probably seen. That thing, you know, is a like mediocre skimmer, no real filtration. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just BRS two part and uh, on a water the, the Tropic Marin, the A and K going yep. on it, and uh, good water change schedule, good water change, and I I don't have any of the plumbing, I don't have all of the leak problems, I don't have like an infinite amount of gear to buy. Yep. Uh, if I had to give the best advice to a newer reefer that like was just getting their feet wet, not really looking for the end game forever tank, right, right, right. Uh, all in one is the easiest way to have your first successes. Mm -hmm. And all in ones were kind of like shamed on. You know, the schemer's not good enough, blah, 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 all you that stuff. You don't need it. Disagree. That's, yeah. I, no. I would run another all in one system and I wouldn't put a skimmer on it. Uh, I wouldn't put filter socks on it because I have to change them. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do anything other than just water changes to this thing and supplement, you know, with my, like the E170. But, you know, I think, uh, I think, I think, not only is it a good starter tank in that I don't have to, you know how many times we say, uh, buy your gear once and then nobody listens to it and you end up buying three or four skimmers, you end up buying more lights, you end up buying do this other thing. And all in one, is I, I can buy my light once uh, because it's the light that fits that size. I don't have to go buy a whole bunch of equipment and try it out and then oh, I got the wrong one, I need to upgrade. Uh, it just makes even buying things simple. Mm -hmm. Uh, absolutely. In relation to buying things, uh, <laughs> here's another what we believe matters most. Create a budget for the tank and the stand. Uh, you know, start there. Right? Budget. Create a budget for it. And this is kind of what I would say is it the, the tank is a uh, furniture and, and it's also a piece of art in the room. Yeah. And so a good rule of thumb is the tank and stand will cost as much as the furniture that it's sitting next to. Yep. So just look around your room, whatever that is, it's probably about the right budget for the tank and stand so that it matches whatever else is in the room, mm -hmm. right? I mean, some uh, people have thousands of dollars in furniture and some people have hundreds of dollars in furniture. Yeah, I mean, it just hit me at different points in my life, absolutely. Yep. You know, yep, and yep, so, yep. Uh, you know, my first tank was in 90 and I think I spent probably about 1500 bucks on the tank mm -hmm. and the stand, right? Yeah. I, and here's the thing is like a lot of this stuff is, you know, not cheap, right? So don't go way over your budget and also like feel comfortable and like thinking about the ROI, what am I going to get out of it? Mm -hmm. Like what did I get out of that armoire that's sitting over in the corner? I don't mm -hmm. know, but this is going <laughs> to give me more. <laughs> so, uh, all right. Uh, and the next one. Uh, another one that we believe matters most is decide on the overflow for you. Mm hmm so uh, over when you're picking a tank, mm. the overflow has... Uh, We're talking inside the tank? There's a few of them, yeah, right? Yeah. You have this, uh, I, I think there's the three styles I can make Reef up. ready, like corners, right? Mm. Yep. yep. The box on the inside, and then there's no box at, at all. There's like the ghost overflow yeah, yeah, on yeah. the outside, right? Uh, and people go call them a lot of different things now. but. Yeah. Uh, the think about what you want. I, I will just say, if you want to butt your tank right up against the wall and it needs to be flush with the wall, well, the overflows need to be inside. Yes. Uh, with the one exception of the, I think of all oh, the, e the Red Max. Sea Maxes. Yeah, the Maxes. Where they like they essentially have, have a little your, box on the back. Yeah, it's not an all-in-one because it has a sump and everything, but it has a little box chamber so you can actually 
shove this thing flat against the wall. Yeah, so with the Red Sea uh, Ma Max bigger tanks, you have essentially a flat wall across the back and then it'll go in. Mm. All right, so that's the advantage. Like, so for everybody else who doesn't really care if the tank is flush with the wall, you get an external overflow, which is like now those boxes that hang off the back, you yeah. know, and it's a smooth back. And what you get with the smooth back on the inside is, yeah, in the inside of the tank, instead of having these big overflow towers, is A, my aquascape doesn't have to build around it, which is a big deal when, you know, the thing pops out five inches, it really is going to change the way that I'm gonna do this. It also doesn't allow me to have flow going across the back because there's a big block in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. You know, I, there's no way to do it. And on the corners, I can no longer put pumps even on the corners. Yeah. So like for me, I would never, ever, ever want an overflow in the tank if I didn't have to have it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't really care about it being all the way up against the wall and I can build my own little wood things or something to hide it if I, I needed to. I'd actually prefer it to be off the wall because there's so many things that uh, like, uh, salt creep water against my wall or, you know, piece of equipment falls back there and then I'm screwed because it's uh, up against the wall. Like, yeah. uh, but uh, if I have a, about two inches of space, not only can I fit, you know, like drivers or power head backs back there, uh, I can also get things, you know, if something were to go bad. So at one point I would have told you that like, you know, if you were going to get the, like the reef savvy tank, right? Mm -hmm. and that goes for overflow. Well, that's like an expensive option that most people aren't <laughs> going to go for. Uh, and so you would be kind of end up with like these marine land things or aquions with the towers inside. Yep. And so you're kind of like, you know, dictated by budget. But I'll actually tell you the opposite now, which is you can actually get a cheaper tank that's just a glass box go drill those two holes for yourself and then put on like mm -hmm. one of the e-shops e e uh, Fiji cube mm -hmm. has them. Yep. I think there's a couple of different places on our site that have them, but then you can just put your own overflow on it. Uh, and it's actually cheaper than the corner overflows and drilling the glass. Some people might be watching right now. Like, oh, I don't want to do that. Like, Easy. go watch the video on it, man, because get a, get a practice tank and try it yourself. Yeah. Like one of uh, the hard lessons I learned, uh, early on was I bought 110 and then I went and had it drilled. Uh, I had left it there for a week. I had two guys help me load it, unload it, whatever. And then when I went over to a friend's house and drilled one, I'm like, what? This is so easy. Uh, what a giant waste of money and time. You paid and you waited, yeah. Yeah, so don't let that hold you back. So, you know, think about all of those things. All right, so. Hard lessons learned about tanks and stands. Hard lessons learned, tank and stand, mm. stuff that you don't have to learn the hard way. Go ahead. First one, uh, like we hit on, out of sight, out of mind. This one hit specifically for you. It hit for me too in the fact that uh, when I had multiple tanks, I had a, this uh, 125 display upstairs. Um, and then I got, you know, the, I got to scratch that itch, caught, caught the multiple tank bug. So I was like, oh, downstairs, basement. I'll add three more tanks down there. Guess what happened? It hardly went down there, barely took care of them. Yeah, it's out just of sight, out of mind. It's yeah. real. The, like the best cared tank that I had, I had, I actually had two that I've cared for the best. Mm. One of them was in uh, my bedroom, and one of them was in the living room. It's because I saw it all the time. I enjoyed it, and when it looked like crap, I cleaned it. Yeah, it you, my walk, room. you walk by, you look, and you go, ah, dang. Yeah, <laughs> take two seconds. And actually, the one that was in the bedroom was actually in my uh, office downstairs, where I actually used that office a lot because uh, mm. I was in, like an editing suite. Yeah. Right? And so, yeah, out of sight, out of mind. A, it's part of the ROI equation. If it's out of sight, you don't actually get to see it because the way you appreciate these things is with your eyes. Mm -hmm. uh, and B, it'll probably turn to crap. And that doesn't mean every case. It means highest percentage or lowest percentage pass are probably associated with out of sight, yep. out of mind. Yeah, right. common theme there. All right, another hard lessons with tanks and stands. Taller than deep oh. is bad, right? <laughs> so if the tank is taller than it is deep front to back, yeah. aquascaping yeah. is really, really hard. Keeping the rock off the glass in the back is really hard. Maintenance, you know, everything, and a lot of it. For those of you who don't know, the way that water works too, when you look at it, it looks roughly a third less deep than it really is. Yeah. So if it's two feet deep, uh, uh, or if it's three feet deep, it will actually only look like two. So if I get down to 18 inches, it really only looks like 12, yeah. uh, the way that your eye works. Yeah. So 
Uh, taller than deep for a reef tank? I don't know about for fish only, but for a reef tank, generally not anything I would ever recommend you, uh, to anyone. You can actually uh, you can actually see this, you know, in like the what we have here. So consider the forty breeder, a sixty gallon, one hundred and twenty, one hundred and eighty, or a custom like two thirds rule. Uh, when I said when I set up my 40 breeder, that is, you know, 36 inches long, uh, 18 inches deep front to back, and then only, uh, what, 12 inches or 14 inches tall or whatever. I forget. It's the just name. slightly deeper. It's slightly it deeper. Tall. But uh, that and a 60 gallon, I've had them both, uh, looked way better dimensionally and proportionally than my six foot 125 that was really narrow front to back but super six feet long and taller than it was front to back yeah like, it, there's something weird about that those dimensions but when you see the the proper demand that two-thirds rule that we're talking about here that uh man there's just something about it that is appealing it's just it wakes makes for better aquascapes yeah. matter, it makes for better swim patterns it makes for better for virtually everything that cares for the animal that's mm -hmm. inside of it and how we you know perceive it uh and so 40 breeder for a small tank, cheap, Solid. awesome, right? Yep. Outside of that, 60, 120, 180, which is uh, basically a two foot cube, two foot cubes stacked together, three two foot cubes stacked <laughs> together. Uh, they're all as deep as they are tall. And the reason works. I recommend those is because they're off the shelf and they're inexpensive. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if I was going to build something custom, mm. in every case, it would be roughly two thirds as tall as it is deep. Mm. Like, so the, the uh, Reef Savvy tank that we were giving for away. For the gift away? Yeah. yeah, for the gift away. That thing was, I think, 22 inches tall by 20 inches, 9 inches deep. Yeah. Right? And it allowed for a really, really cool aquascape in mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you're going to build custom, at least explore the two-thirds mm -hmm. rule of being two-thirds as tall as it is deep front to back. It looks better. I guarantee it, it looks better. I don't know why more places don't sell this thing. It might be because there aren't enough people giving this counsel yeah. or showing like, why it actually is so much better. We should say, we should, uh, I wonder if you, it's hard to document on camera to actually show that, that feel, that difference. So I had a 55 gallon tank, a standard 55, like super skinny, way tall and like three feet long. And uh, I you could I could not get it to look like a decent looking tank. I've now built a, in recent history two pretty elaborate aquascapes for a 120, which mm -hmm. is the exact same height as tall, uh, or depth as tall, and it was really hard to get the height, get that kind of front to back, you know, depth Fill feeling the space, uh, yeah. uh, of it. And then when I built uh, the most recent one, which is 29 inches deep all of a sudden the scape just kind of sprawled and it was so much cooler <laughs> and easier. So huh. take that advice. Uh, another hard lesson that I would like to avoid in the future is consider your wood floors when you're placing your tank and where mm. you're gonna put it. I mean, if there's not one thing that damages wood floors quicker, it's water and even worse, salt water. So I will just say I've never lived in a house where the dogs I had didn't destroy the floors too or other <laughs> pets. So it might just be part of the whole thing. And you can always refinish them or whatever in many cases. Yeah. But uh, I will say that if you don't put any thought into it at all, expect the saltwater tank to ruin Destroyed. the wood floors around it yeah. because it is going to drip off your hand. It's inevitable. You're not going to rinse it off perfectly. And the salt is going to corrode the finish. Yeah. Uh, and so... Uh, you could, you know, install tile down there. It's possible. I've never done anything like this, but it's possible you could put, you know, some kind of waterproof barrier, oh, yeah. uh, like some rubber, and then cover it with a nice decorative rug or something. Yeah. So if the rug gets wet, at least it's not going through the rubber and going on to your floor. I, just put some thought into if the place that this is going into uh, is a wood floor, just a little bit of thought as to how do I protect the floor as yeah, well. For sure. uh, or is there a better place that isn't wood? That doesn't have wood. <laughs> there you go. Uh, another hard lesson we learned is uh, going big just for the sake of going big. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure I fell into this trap, although a 125 is not a massive leap from like what I was able to do with a 40 breeder. 
Uh, but I could not see myself in a 500 just because it's 500 and I want to be at be the 500 club. Uh, don't go big just for the sake of going big. There's a lot to think about, a lot to consider, a lot of extra cost. The cost, man. One of them is if this is going to be a reef tank, it's super expensive to fill with coral. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, man. Yeah. I mean, coral is only getting more expensive as well. And so if I had a, a four foot tank versus an eight foot tank, it's going to cost twice as much to <laughs> uh, fill with coral. So there's cost there. There's cost mm -hmm. of lighting. You know, every equipment. piece of equipment mm -hmm. is bigger. And that was actually one of the things when I got a 90, somebody told me afterward, hey, dude, you should have gotten, and that was uh, one of those ones that's taller than deep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I regretted it big time. <laughs> uh, but uh, they told me afterward, man, that like, you know, you just didn't have to do it that way. Yeah. And, and so I, I don't know, man. I just think that you should consider doing the, when you're picking a size of a tank, don't go big just for the sake of going big. Think about how much money you're going to put into all that equipment. Oh, and the 90, actually. It was that if I go to 120, the only cost of difference was uh, uh, like the cost of the tank. Was the cost of the tank. The yeah. lights are going to be roughly same. the same. Yeah. The skimmer's going to be roughly the same. The stand's probably going to be roughly the same. Both four-foot tanks. Some's going to be roughly the same. <laughs> it was like, is that difference between a 90 and a 120 really enough to justify you know, all that you lose, yeah. the answer is no. <laughs> so uh, think about how big you want to go. Don't get hung up on, on what you think you should do or what you think is cool. Match it to your actual needs. <laughs> uh, another hard lesson learned, uh, taller than 24 inches is a risk. Uh, I'm, do you want your armpits wet or no? <sighs> it's <laughs> tough, man, it's tough because- Especially I, if you have 24 inch plus, and that that depth, you know, that beyond 24 inches front to back. Now we're really talking some challenges of, well, I can't reach everything from the front. And if I got a four foot tank, I'm dang I'm dang sure not reaching anything down in the back middle. Uh, like, so how am I going to get there? You know, uh, there's a lot to think about. You know, my arm is not 24 inches. I first saw a friend of mine's tank that was three feet uh, deep. Tall? Yeah, uh, tall. And you can see the fish like spinning them around, and they went up, they went down, and like, oh, oh it's cool. a cool new dimension to the whole thing rather than back and forth, right? Yeah. It's like the difference between watching, you know, which is kind of like 2D if they just go back and forth, but if you get depth to tank, all of a sudden it's like 3D. And, and then oh. if you get height, man, it's like you went to the fourth dimension. <laughs> you know? so it's really, really appealing to get that extra height out of it. And in my tank, I'm like, oh, what if I just, you know, push it to the limits just a little bit and I get 26 and a half? Well, you know what? I'm exactly two and a half inches from being able to touch the bottom in most places and it sucks. Yeah. Right? The I'll live with it and it does look nice. But if I could do it over again, the thing would be 22 to 24 inches tall. I can touch I'll the bottom. give up that and I'll be able to clean and maintain it and plant coral on it and take care of it easier. Mm. Uh, flip over a snail that needs flipping, uh, whatever it is, like, I, I will do it. I, it just isn't valuable enough for me to go above 24 inches. Yeah. Uh, really think that one out before you do it as somebody who really, really thought they would enjoy it. I thought, uh, I thought the same about my 90, my 90 cube or 93 gallon cube. Uh, I was like, oh man, I love the, you know, the 30 inches by 30 inches and 28 inches tall. That's eh, no big deal. I could not reach. <laughs> there were so many things that got lost down there and my tongs, you know, they only work so many different ways than my fingers do that. Uh, I don't, I, I would never do it again. I got pretty lengthy arms and fingers too, man. Like, uh, <laughs> so uh, if I think about it, like if your arm is shorter than this one, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right. Oh, this is a good point here. Uh, another hard lesson that you may not have thought of is going really big mm. may require more power yeah. than you have. Oh, I, I don't know. I've never considered out of all the gear that I wanted to throw on my tank and, you know, every piece of every extra piece of this and that and all because I'm, I'm a gear junkie. Uh, one thing that didn't cross my mind, and I don't know how many times I flipped that breaker and I ended up running extension cords to another breaker extension cord over to the tank is the power, the amount of power that this thing will suck just from a single, you know, breaker on your outlet. Like you almost have to divvy it up between four breakers. And that's 
you know, that's where, you know, when you're considering like going back to coming up here and, and talking about the piece of furniture in our house and how, you know, if I actually spend some time thinking about, you know, why the, this tank looking great, equal amount of time spent into how am I going to solve the power solution, the power problem? The big ones, the heaters actually end up being the biggest suck because like you know, 600 a watts a piece. Yeah. yeah. And, and some of this you can actually define, you know, like uh, I could probably run a, if I was only going to do a fish only in a big tank. Well, you know, I don't have to have really power powered lights. The heater, the heat of the tank can probably mm -hmm. maybe be a little bit lower. Uh, I yeah. can, you know, make some decisions that are, are different than I would on a reef tank. Don't need as much gear so you know think about that but remember some of these things that like how all this stuff intertwines mm. so all right what's next